Let's go over the directory structure from top to bottom. First, we have the app directory, which in default installation has just three folders, HTTP, models, and providers. But more folders and files will be added here as you start using the framework and its commands and features. The app directory will basically contain the core code of your application. The same also applies to the HTTP directory. Currently, it only has the controllers directory in there and the base controller, but it will also have the middleware and the form requests later on. HTTP directory basically houses almost all of your application's request-related logic. Then we have the models directory, and this is the directory that will contain uh, all of your eloquent model classes. Eloquent is Laravel's ORM, which we'll cover a bit later in the course, but basically each database table would have a corresponding model that is used to query, update, and simply interact with that table. By default, we just have this one user model, which you guessed it right, is the model for the user's table. A lot of the things in Laravel are convention-based, like automatically figuring out the table name from the class name and so on, and you will start to see more of that as we progress through the course. Next we have the providers, and we did talk about the service providers a little bit previously, but these are the classes that help bootstrap your application. Note that not all of the service providers are visible in here because most of them are framework specific service providers that you don't need to really worry about. By default, we just have this app service provider and then later on you would add your own custom service providers and they would be created under this providers directory. Then we have the bootstrap directory, which we also discussed previously. It contains the app.php that is responsible for bootstrapping the framework. The cache directory under it just contains the cached framework generated files like the packages, services, routes, and so on to boost performance. We also have this providers.php file here, which essentially is there to register uh, the service providers. As you can see, it is registering the app service provider in here. And then later on, you can add more service providers in here. There is a command that you can actually use to generate a service provider, and then it automatically adds it in here for you. So you don't have to manually add that in. Then we have the config directory, which is pretty self-explanatory because it contains all of your app's config files. While you may not need to touch some of these configuration files, it is highly recommended to read through the available options just to understand and know what they are. We'll talk more about configs a bit later in the course, so don't worry about it too much uh, right now, but I would suggest for you to just go through them and see what's available. Database directory contains factories, migrations, and seeders. We're going to talk about these later as well, uh, but model factories and seeders are mostly used for testing, like for your unit and feature tests, and migrations are your database schema-related files. If you followed my PHP series, then you should already know what migrations are. If not, then don't worry about it, we'll get there in time. Then we have the public directory, which basically is your document root. It contains the index.php where all the requests go through. Public directory will also contain your assets like images, compiled CSS and JavaScript, and so on. So while public directory contains your compiled CSS and JavaScript, the resources directory is what will contain your uncompiled assets like CSS and JavaScript. This will also contain your front end and your views like uh, blade templates and so on. We're going to be covering the asset bundling and front end tooling also in this course, so lots of fun and exciting topics to be explored. Then we have the routes directory, which uh, contains both your uh, web routes under the web.php and your console closure based commands under console.php. These are just defaults and then you can of course have different route files. If your application provides REST API, then you may place your routes under the api.php, which would have a set of different middlewares applied than the web.php. The web.php will just basically house all of your stateful routes. Next we have the storage directory which contains uh, your application logs, files generated by your application and files generated by the framework. 
If you don't use a remote storage solution like AWS S3, then you might decide to store some of your files somewhere within this directory. Then files generated by the framework are things like file-based sessions, some caches, compiled blade templates, and so on. Then we have the tests directory, which will contain your unit and feature tests. Basically your PHP unit or pest tests. PHP unit is the testing framework and Laravel provides a lot of helper methods that makes writing tests a lot easier. PEST is also a testing framework that gives you even more features and makes it even more easier to write uh, tests with a more functional programming approach and feel to it. It is built on top of PHP unit so you can still use PHP unit features in it but it also provides a very developer friendly API. Some devs love it, some don't like it. I personally haven't tried PEST yet, so we won't be covering that in this course. But if you're curious and want to try it out, definitely give it a shot. It's a really great framework. Finally, the vendor directory contains the composer stuff. And of course, we have all of these files here available at the root of your application. As you start using the framework features, you will discover or should I say unlock additional folders. But until then, I would suggest not to get overwhelmed. Don't worry if you don't understand what these folders and files are for. You will come to learn them when you actually need to. It may seem like a lot, but you will be spending most of your time probably within the app and the resources directory, at least in the beginning. Alright, so that's it for the directory structure overview. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time, happy coding.